Spice Man. That's right. Keep adding up, multiplying, man. Spice Man. Okay. A couple things we're going to learn today. Spice Man. All right. Take some time, educate yourself. Spice Man. That's right. You won't believe it's just math. Come on. Hi, I'm Ruth Dutton. Hi, I'm Aaron Williams. Hi, I'm Brandon Alexander. Hi, I'm Kelvin Dutton. Hello, I'm Lyndon Sincere. We are your Spice Math Tutors. You won't believe it's just math. Hello, mathematicians, and welcome to this episode of Spice Math. Solving compound inequalities involves a number of steps. And I am going to take you through those steps so that you will become proficient in solving such types of inequalities. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to, one, recognize a compound inequality, and two, apply methods of solving simple linear inequalities to solve compound inequalities. Let's begin. Let us examine a compound inequality. Now, let us consider the following example. We have 3x plus 2 is greater than negative 5, or we say negative 5 is less than 3x plus 2. But then at the same time, that's why we have the and, 3x plus 2 is less than or equal to 4. Do you know that we can combine this inequality statement and that inequality statement into one or oh, yes and that is why it is called a compound inequality so expressed as a compound term we have 3x plus 2 is less than or equal to 4 and at the same time 3x plus 2 is greater than negative 5. Students, it is important for you to note that this compound inequality has three distinct parts. Part one, part two, and part three. Part one is in blue, which is the negative five connected by the inequality sign less than. Part three is in, is that orange? Don't laugh at me. Red, orange, connected with another inequality sign to part three, which is in yellow. So here, your compound inequality has been categorized into three separate parts. So let's consider a real life example. A cellular phone company offers the following plan. $30 per month buys 60 minutes. We can represent the time T in this plan using a compound inequality. It reads T is less than or equal to 60, but greater than or equal to zero. What does that mean? It means that for $20, you can obtain up to and including 60 minutes. Obviously, time must start at zero. So I'm sure that you own a cell phone, just maybe. If you do, do you have a plan for your minutes? Or maybe you can ask your parents, if they do own a cell phone, what plan they are using, if they do have a plan for their minutes. And then form a compound inequality statement with the information 
that they gave you or that you know. How about sharing that with your friends? And so, how do we solve this compound inequality? The thing is, solving indicates that we are finding a value for the unknown, which is, in this case, x. So our goal at the end of our solving is to have x bound between two numbers. The thing is, keep in mind, we are trying to isolate x. And once we do that, we would have solved this compound inequality. Let's go. So the big question is, how do we solve this compound inequality? Well, for every big question, there's a big answer. And the big answer is, perform the same operation on all three parts. I would like you to document this statement in your book. I read, perform the same operation on all three parts. Just to recall, the inequality has part one, part two, and part three. Now let's solve. So here I'm going to walk you through the steps that can enable you to solve this compound inequality. You can see those steps on your screen so you'll know if I'm doing the correct thing. Step number one, it says write the compound inequality. So this is my step one. Step number two, Subtract two from all three parts. Why are we subtracting two? At this point, I must say that some students are often confused as to which number goes first when solving an expression like this for x. Is it the three or is it the two? But you can recall in a previous video where we spoke about which one goes first, it was emphasized that in this simple expression, and permit me to write it here, 3x plus 2, if we are going to solve for x, well this is an expression, maybe you can allow me to equate it to hmm, maybe 4. Let's see. So this is not an inequality. If we are going to solve for x, the question is, does the 2 go first or the 3? Remember, in solving this simple expression, we use the reverse of bod mass or bomb das. We use... Uh, that's what? Sad mob? And so, addition and subtraction operations are done before division and multiplication. So here it is obvious that the two would go first. Our motive is to isolate x. Okay, I will leave that and I will come here. So students, our two needs to go first. We are going to do the reverse of addition, which is subtraction. So we have 3x plus 2. I am going to subtract 2. It's less than or equal to 4. I am going to subtract 2. It's greater than negative 5. I am going to subtract 2. So kindly observe that I subtracted 2 from each one of the three parts. Let us simplify. Negative 5 minus negative 2 would give me negative 7 is less than 3 
x, negative 2 plus 2 is actually equal to 0. So we have a little zeroing out right there. It's less than or equal to 4 minus 2 is 2. What do you notice is happening? X would soon be isolated, left all by himself. And that's our goal. Allow me to take this off. Let me take that off. Because we now know that 3 is the only one left to go. The purpose of 3 here is to multiply. So 3 is 3x three, is 3 times x. So to get rid of 3, if you look on your screen in my third step, it says divide each part by 3. So as usual, you're not going to do this in this line. You are going to rewrite this line and then show the operation. Why are we doing that? I often tell my students, when you perform algebraic operations, pretend as though you're an author. You're trying to write a mathematics textbook. And so you would want your steps to be as clear as much as possible so that the reader can follow. So we are going to rewrite this step. What are we doing? We are dividing each part by three. If you like colors and it's the first time you're doing it, you could probably use a different color. Let me try green. So divided by three, divided by three, divided by three. So I have negative seven divided by three. Three divided by three is actually one. That will give me one x and two divided by three. I can leave that alone. Um, it's good to work with fractions. So we have negative seven over three is less than x. Is less than or equal to two over three. We have isolated x, and so. This is our result. We have solved the compound inequality for x. So it reads, negative seven on three is less than x, is less than or equal to two thirds. If you want to take up the challenge, you could actually transform this to your number line as would have been taught to you in one of my previous videos. So by now, form fours and fives, I hope you're just a little bit more comfortable in solving the compound inequality. But you'll find out because I have two questions here for you to try all on your own and I'll be back to give you those solutions.
Great. I do admire your efforts. I am going to walk you through the steps for question one. So there we have, we write the compound inequality first. Next, who goes first? Is it the negative three or is it the negative five? It's the negative five. And so I am going to add five to both sides. Use a different color. Why am I adding 5 to both sides? The reverse of subtraction is addition. So I'm trying to get rid of negative 5. And simplifying, I'll have 5 plus 2 is 7. It's less than minus 3x. These two are going to cancel out to 0. It's less than or equal to 6 plus 5 is 11. The goal is to isolate x once again. And so I need to get rid of negative 3. The operation that negative 3 is performing to x is that of multiplication. The reverse of multiplication is division. So I need to divide each part by negative 3. A red flag should go up. I repeat. I need to divide each part of the compound inequality by negative 3. So we're going to rewrite this statement. I guess you're wondering, what is she doing? Where are the inequality signs? You would remember in a previous video that you were taught that division by a negative number when solving inequalities results in the flipping or the changing of the inequality sign. And that is why I left these spots blank to hear if you're going to tell me anything at all. So therefore, if I'm dividing throughout by a negative number, this inequality sign should reverse and thus become greater than as well as this inequality sign should reverse and become greater than or equal to. And now you're correct. So we have 7 over negative 3 is greater than x is greater than or equal to 11 over negative 3. Now have we isolated x? Oh yes, we did. We are left with the inequality statement, x is greater than or equal to 11 over negative 3, and 7 over negative 3 is greater than x. So let's attempt our second task. It reads, x divided by negative 2 is less than or equal to 5, which is greater than or equal to 0. Our objective is to isolate x. So we'll have x, some sign, and the number, some inequality sign, and the number. So x must be the subject. We need to get rid of negative 2. The operation of negative 2 in this expression here is division. So the reverse of division is multiplication. It therefore means that I need to multiply each one of the three parts of the inequality by negative 2. So let's do that. So I'll have 0 times, I'll use a different color, negative 2. This is less than or equal to x over negative 2. I would like to encourage you to use colors as well. They just help with emphasis. So we have 5. Two, seven, two. 
So let's simplify. Negative 2 times 0 gives me 0. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 leaves me with x. 5 times negative 2 gives me negative 10. You're wondering, miss, where are your signs? Remember, if you are dividing by a negative number when solving an inequality, you flip the signs. Similarly, if you're multiplying by a negative number when solving an inequality, you also flip the signs. So, at this point, I'm going to insert my flipped signs. Now I'm correct. And I know that's what you had. So it reads, x lies between 0 and negative 10. That is, x is greater than negative 10 and x is less than 0. So from 4s and 5s, I'm sure that by now you are proficient in solving compound inequalities. I have that confidence in you, and in particularly form fives, I want to impress upon you to take the examples in this video seriously. And you know what? I'm going to come to you in another video with some more examples of solving compound inequalities. Bye, and see you next time. You won't believe it's just math. Come on.